evening down here you guys are getting bored of me tired of me <laughs> whatever just at home uh sent a video earlier there you guys probably seen already just at home join the join nature man flowers are blooming everything's blooming around Some beautiful uh, lilacs next door the cottonwood trees are out and the, the um dog flowers <laughs> Oh, Shelly's getting a little asthma attacked in there. A little flowers blooming doesn't help her allergies. So, hey, yeah, you know, today I um, showed you what I was doing there. And tonight I um, came home, made a gourmet meal. Uh, quite a cook, too. I like cooking. Love cooking. So I made some chicken quesadillas tonight. And Shelly says they're the best she's ever had. That's cool. And... Um, I just wanted to talk about some guys made comments on those little 2100 and uh, 11100 that I had there I showed you earlier. And they, a lot of them leak oil. And it's because they're, what these older saws, they've sat around for so many years. If you guys look behind an 1100 and the 2100 mufflers, the two oil hoses is there. You got your automatic oil hose and your manual oil hose. And they're probably deteriorated and rotting. Along with the rubber mounts of the gas tank to the to the chassis, um, they get old. They get they've had oil on them and they deteriorate. Eh? Where the new spring mounts are, are definitely an improvement uh, for for anti vibration. Plus, um, they don't wear down like that. So, um, and you guys got those there, and they're leaking oil. Um, take your muffler off and look at those hoses. Um, install some new ones. The one hose for the um, uh, automatic oiler has like a um, a check valve and it's, it's sometimes those check valves get seized too when they sit for a long time so when you get the hoses off just get take a little tiny punch and and, and hit that ball you'll see it in the where the fittings are where the oil hoses go on and it'll release that that little ball and spring and you're um like I say, I'm just thinking if it's the manual or the oil or the automatic one. It doesn't matter. That's that's how you need to fix it. So uh, put the new hoses on. Pull the one out of the tank and check your screen. Make sure it's not like had so much oil, had oil in there for 20 years, 30 years. And now it's solidified, right? It's a plastic kind of screen in there um, on the end of that oil oiler hose. And sometimes they collapse and then you won't get any oil at all to... Um, the manual and, and the um, automatic of it. Yeah, that's just a little tip. Yeah, it works. Uh, Oilers on them were really good. Actually, Brass Gear um, Oiler Drive System worked really well for a long time. Um, and, and sometimes with those tanks too, where the oil hoses are, they have a they have a it's a seamed tank. They 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 like bonded two magnesium halves together to make it. And sometimes they split up front and it'll leak there too, the, the chain oil. And it'll, if the hoses are good, it'll still leak chain oil and dribble all over your shop floor. So you can either, don't, just don't leave oil in it. And keep oil in it and have a, 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 one of those um, pads underneath it that suck up the oil, right? Sawdust, whatever, cat litter, suck the oil. Um... Yeah, who cares, right? If it's split a little bit, whatever, man. Just just don't put oil in it. Put oil in it when you want to use it. Um, that's all I can say about that. Um, but good old units. I, I meant to say those 2100 years ago, they didn't have a decompression valve. So so me and my dad, some, and they had such a small little starter handle on them for a high compression chainsaw. So what we did is we actually would put a couple extra put an extra base gasket under the cylinders you know and it would increase the squish but whatever um it, the guys could start them like i've had mechanics working for me through the years that they just couldn't start 2100s and pull their shoulder out but I, you know i have a knack to it i uh i drop start saws you know throw it away from me as you yank it get it up to the compression stroke and give it a give it a throw then then, then pull at the same time and that, that just seems to work well for me.
on big displacement old saws that don't have a, a decomp or or they do so yeah i just wanted to say that um about those saws a couple guys commented already about that and then some of those old saws like on the back of the 2100 you have a um a plunger for the for the manual oiler to, like an override so if you're running a real long bar in a big big bucket situation or you're milling you pump that but pump really slow because it, it puts pressure on that one line under the muffler and it, it, they had these little clamps on there years ago and people usually lose them where they don't put them back on um and it'll blow that line off if you pump it too hard so just pump really easy slow and it works or you you can rebuild that little pump too you pull it out with a special tool i still have one i think in my toolbox from like the 70s or 80s or whatever and uh what will happen sometimes too if the o-rings on that plunger it goes through the fuel tank into the oil tank so those o-rings on that plunger if they deteriorate and whatnot the chain oil will actually leak into the gas tank and it'll you'll be wondering like why the heck's my saw smoking and running so rich and, and weird and it's because that chain oil is coming in so now you got like double double oil right it's uh won't seize the motor but it, it'll definitely keep the mosquitoes away <laughs> yeah because those things run smoggy anyways right so they ran a really rich old school motor right but um yeah i can't wait to um next week one night i think i'll spend a little time and go up there and and uh do that 2100 and i'll get it running and i'll show you guys i'm gonna put on my alaska mill and i'm gonna go to a my, one of my co-workers uh, mom's house she's got a log there that's sitting there and i i wanted to do a video of me doing a little bit of milling and um i'll put my old alaskan 36 inch mill on there um some uh 404 uh i don't really have any 404 ripping chain but my 2100 has 404 on it i might i think i'll switch it to 3 8 and i'll run that um like 75 rd or 73 rd uh ripping chain on it or i'll just take a regular chain and just grind it more straight across 10 degrees it works perfect too everyone has an opinion on milling chains and i've seen every scenario with milling chains the biggest thing about milling chains is just keeping them sharp there's there's different combinations of uh carlton has or i mean sorry um the grandberg mill people they, they 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 have a little diagram and tell it shows you how to kind of uh, sharpen your chain to certain angles and then miss one or whatever but you know what i was i've always just ran the old round tooth chain 10 degrees cross keep the rakers at normal 25 don't don't go any more it drags the saw down too much keep the speed up and um it works perfect so the, the biggest thing i always tell people with milling uh with, with alaska mills um is have extra chains you know like you can a lot of people with residential wood they're, they're they're milling up an old apple tree or a cherry tree which you know is beautiful wood um or maple whatever man there's so many species we all know about that um you can hit something people will put an old fence line in there a miller uh, an, an old fence line they have a staple in there a nail and bang yeah it wrecks your chain right so, you know, it's, you spend like almost an hour trying to file a chain, especially some of those those ripping chains are all full house, right? Well, you know, when you're running a five, six foot bar cutting those big things, that's a lot of teeth to file. Me? I think you're better off just around like the old skip tooth type chain. Um, gr you know, file it at that 10 degrees for sure, but keep the rakers around 25. And just keep them sharp, man. Have some extra ones. One time, me and Johnny, my brother, we were building up the cedar log. It was funny. Or we my friend Chad, he's at his house, and we had this, the wood bug sawmill, which I still have one. It's really cool, actually. A real cool system. Um, so we're cutting this log, and then we get into about a quarter away of it, and it um, we hit something. So, like, bang. You know, the chain kind of stops and like, wrecks it, right? So we change the chain. We go again for about another six, eight inches. Bang again. It, we hit something else. So I'm like, oh my God, what the heck's going on here? 
So we decided, hey man, let's just stop. So I, I took my other saw and I, I ripped the center of this log open and I looked at it and this thing had like an aluminum um, telegraph cable. We figured out it was a telegraph cable because we were, we, were, we were milling this wood up by um, the army um, a rifle range, an army area up behind an animal here. And they used to have these telegraph cables and they had it all wound through the trees, right? Well, I guess this one went through this, they had it stapled up against the cedar tree with one of those little transformer things. And, you know, they stopped using it and then it grew into the tree. So it grew like crooked into the, into the log, right? Into the tree. So, man, after like four chains, that's when I figured it out. We ripped it open and looked at it like, yeah, it was pretty cool. Whatever. It was an experience, right? Like, you know, like, you know, it was a bummer that that happened. We got nowhere that day milling wood. But um, just a good experience. It was funny. Yeah. So that's what I always say, man. If you're going to do milling or um, even just firewood, man, have yourself a couple chains. Chains aren't like, that expensive. And if they are in your area, well, then source out a better... Um, a retailer a person to buy them off we sell chain in, in bc here at our shop uh about the cheapest of anyone if you go by the oregon list price oh my goodness you're paying a lot of money for it that you know an average 24 inch chain or something should be like 30 bucks or something right you know that's nothing have an extra chain don't run your saw with a dull chain you wreck the bar you overheat the engine and you overheat yourself so so why would you want to do that it just doesn't make sense. So, I don't know. I rambled on about that, didn't I? But anyways, the old 2100s and stuff, that's what you want to look for in those. Um, and, oh, yeah, another fix on those, which I've had some people come in. They have, on the flywheel, the, the, the pawls. And the pawls are the activation little arms that, that connect to your starter pulley for starting them. If you notice that you're you know, all of a sudden your starter is not grabbing or slipping, those poles were, had little posts that they pressed into, like a pressed system into the flywheel. So if you have them that they're loose and they're falling apart, what you can do is you take the 394 type uh, flywheel poles or the 395, tap your flywheels on the, those old saws with a tap to a five millimeter, and then you put the screws in there of of that that come with the pawls on the 394 395 and now those things are permanent lock tight them into and then you're going to be okay but a lot of times those things all these old saws that have been used a lot come loose and then, then they rub up against your starter pulley which is the rotor that your ropes wrapped around then it wears all that all out and you can mess up a bunch of stuff it'll take out fins on the flywheel and whatnot so i don't know well, I just came up with that, but <laughs> keep your saw in the wood. Have a great weekend. Say hi to your brothers tomorrow. <laughs>